We got our hurricane specialist joining us, Brian Norcross. I know he was working over the weekend. Uh, Brian, good to see you. Good morning. So a few things that we need to watch this week. Yeah, it's uh, getting interesting in the Atlantic for sure. We talked about by the middle of August having the Atlantic pick up. It's actually starting to do that now. All these things are going to kind of slowly develop. So I, I do think that we're still looking another week ahead before this more conducive whole bubble uh, affects the Atlantic. But things are really starting to spin, and that's what you see. When the uh, pattern is conducive, it seems like everything that wants to spin starts to spin. And the uh, computer forecast, the longer-range computer forecast, indicate that that's going to happen in the Atlantic. All right, but let's deal with these things, uh, the three of them that you talked about. And we're going to start up here with Dexter just to kind of get it out of the way, honestly, just because it's our fourth named storm of the year. And we're, you know, kind of right on schedule more or less there, maybe a little bit ahead of schedule for four storms. There it is. There's the cluster of thunderstorms with it. So you see the thunderstorms are ahead of where the National Hurricane Center is putting the center. 45 mile an hour tropical storm moving east northeast at 12 miles an hour. The other thing to notice on this picture is look at these clouds up here screaming along the jet stream is just north of this storm it's affecting it but not tremendously when we look at the close-up a picture where we get a view where we can really see the circulation we see the circulation is back in here and the thunderstorms are up in here so that's because these upper level winds are kind of hostile and pushing things that way so it's not really going to be able to develop a lot and it's probably going to merge with the upper level system in the North Atlantic and just be a North Atlantic storm. So there's the cone. The National Hurricane Center says, okay, a 50-mile-an-hour storm speeding off, eventually just merging into the North Atlantic and becoming a non-tropical storm, and that's going to be that uh, for Dexter. All right, now, the super complicated thing here off the East Coast. So there's Dexter. It's actually not on the front. Remember, it formed as a result of a low that formed on the front, and then it just separated from the front slightly, but it's still right next to what you'd have to consider a frontal system there. But this area down in here, uh, we have it over the front because the front is going to kind of trigger it, but it is not a system that's there yet, and that's why there are no X's or anything. Hurricane Center is. That's the zone where we think that something could develop. Remember, they have a 30% chance on it, and then the front extends all the way back into Louisiana and Texas along the Gulf Coast. As you've been talking about, it's a very, very wet pattern all over the south. When we look at the moisture in the atmosphere, and this is the computer representation of this. Here's what we see there. There's Dexter up there, rotating up there, right? And then we see this weird uh, conglomeration of moisture. Here's all the rain that's affecting North Georgia and the Carolinas and the mountains there. We also see here all this dry air coming in here. This is high pressure off to the east of Florida. Dry, dry, dry in South Florida and hot right now. And all that moisture is with that front that's up in here. Here. Okay, now what's going to happen as we go forward in time? Watch up in the upper left. That's our time frame. We're going to go forward to Thursday now, and look what happens. A couple things. One is offshore here, we start to get a circulation that's kind of related to that front, but also related to this disturbance that extends down here and is moving in this way. Notice that this moisture has pushed the dry air out, and now look what we have here. We have this kind of flow going like like this uh, coming in the Atlantic. So it's a combination of the front and this disturbance from the east that is causing this to start here spinning. It's kind of the northern end of this elongated disturbance here. And then we have another disturbance up here, and this is the one that's been over kind of over Alabama, and that's kind of going up that way. So it's a super complicated, all very weak systems, but a lot of moisture involved. Okay, going forward in time here, Friday, Saturday morning morning. There you see that when it's offshore and it comes up near the Carolina coast, according to this model, could be a little north or south, so forth. And the moisture uh, moves through Florida here and, and uh, North Florida is kind of on the tail end of this. But look at this as we go into Sunday. See, the model wants to kind of put the, something down here and then something up here. Again, an elongated area of low pressure here. 
uh, bringing kind of continuous rain to some areas in the south and in Florida, mostly, I think, central Florida and north Florida, but south Florida will get at least some moisture surge before the dry air comes back in. But super complicated. No reason to think anything strong is going to develop. The issue here might be more than anything rain, but we could we could get a tropical depression at least out of this. If it were uh, to develop into a storm, it would be called Aaron, well, unless the one in the Atlantic did that first. But anyway, that's the next name uh, on the list. So we'll keep an eye on all this, but again, nothing concerning except for at this moment for the possible heavy rain. Okay, nothing as simple out here either. Uh, what this map is telling you is that there's a disturbance just exiting Africa, and in this area, in a few days, the Hurricane Center is giving it a 50% chance of developing into at least a tropical depression. The other thing you see on this satellite picture is look all in here. You don't see any, any clouds except for these very kind of gray, very low clouds because it's very, 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 very dry. Uh, so this is going to have tough sledding to do a whole lot, but uh, there is a lot of moisture down in here. And if it can stay south, it will have more moisture to tap into. Okay, let's look and see what the satellite shows when we look at Africa. There is our system that we were talking about. But look, I want you to note one back here. And notice the difference between these two. This one is farther south. So we're only going to make a kind of glancing uh, discussion of that one because uh, it's a long way out. It's still over Africa. But the models do pick up on that, as I'll show you here in just a second. So let's focus on this one here. That's the immediate one. There's where the moisture is uh, with that one. You notice one back here is maybe even a little more broader uh, moisture package, but this one has plenty to work with. And here it comes. So here we go again, looking today. Now we're going to go forward in time as it moves. It stays on that kind of moist track, staying uh, farther south. And you see, this is the European model, and it has this kind of strong out, low pressure here uh, down there, plenty moist, keeping all the dry air, this brown, all up to the north. All right, but then the high pressure that's holding it south is going to have a gap in it. So here we go. It's going to turn to the north in some fashion. So what's the angle going to be? Is it going to come up over here uh, or is it going to go up there? In any case, if it goes up in here, like the European says, it's got all this dry air and everything to contend with, Sahara and dust and what have you. So the European has a relatively weak system up to the north. Well, the other models spread out all the possibilities. Look at that all over the place. These dark reds are the GFS, and they have a pretty strong system here. So this is a system we're going to have to watch and see because there is no consensus in the models. I do want to just mention one other thing before we go here, and that's down to the south. Remember that other system I mm. talked to you about? Look at all the possibilities there. A lot of models are showing some kind of development farther south, but that would be way next week in the future. But anyway, the, uh, the point of that is hurricane season is indeed cranking up. Lots to watch here over the next, well, probably the next few months, but certainly for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Brian, when you look at all of the forecast models hinting at something, I mean, you are pointing out, yes, they vary in where, but how much stock as a meteorologist and as people who are tuning in, should they put into, okay, this is just barely emerging off the coast of Africa and they all have it, especially with the other wave that's still deep back into Africa. It's going to take some time. I mean, that to me sticks out as, okay, this is really going to be something interesting in the next seven to 14 days. You know, uh, one of the issues here is, which kind of bothers me, honestly, is we have a lot to show. We have all these new things to show. Look at that that, uh, that I'm showing right now with all these different low center possibilities. Some are hurricanes in there. Some are just uh, tr tropical depressions in that kind of conglomeration. And it's really hard to get a feel for with so much data. The bottom line is we've got a long time with these systems. And we, so we would just want people to kind of relax and let it develop. And we'll know with plenty of warning if it's going to be a threat right now. There is no imminent threat, you know, threat for the next week that we need to be worried about. You know, and, but after that, uh, we'll see. We are moving into the heart of hurricane season, obviously, once we get to the middle of August. So uh, don't get overwhelmed by looking at all this new stuff that we have. Right. It is kind of crazy and it's interesting, uh, but, but it's not, uh, you know, we still have plenty of time to, to observe and have a better, firmer idea on what might happen. 
More to come on that. We, we do know it. We appreciate the, uh, the insight, yep. as always. That wrench, I think, is still that boundary just off the southeast coast, which I'm glad that uh, you were able to highlight as well, Brian. Brian Norcross, appreciate our hurricane specialist for us. Right.